Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about finding derivatives of inverse functions. So say I have something like this, find the derivative of the inverse of y equals x cubed at x equals eight. I can start a problem like this by solving for the inverse of y. So to solve for the inverse of a function, I switch x and y. So this would become x equals y cubed. And then I solve for y. When I solve for y, I get y equals the cubed root of x. This is now my inverse function. So to clarify the difference between y equals x cubed and y equals the cube root of x, I give this an exponent of negative one. So now this is y inverse equals the cube root of x. If I want the derivative of this function at x equals eight, I could then write this inverse function as x to the one third and then take a derivative, which then the notation looks a little weird. Y prime inverse, gross, is one third x to the negative two thirds, which is the same as one over three x to the positive two thirds. And if I evaluate that at x equals eight, I have one over three times the cube root of eight squared. The cube root of eight is two squared is four times three. There is the derivative of my inverse function one over 12 at x equals eight. This seems kind of complicated. And what happens if y becomes more complicated or solving for the inverse ends up being either really long and difficult or frankly, just impossible. We need an easier way and there is an easier way. So let's take a look at that. So we have a theorem that says the derivative of the inverse of a function at a, b is equal to the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function at b, a. This theorem is very wordy, so I feel that a table that looks something like this makes our life a little bit easier in pulling out the information that we need and the information that we want to find based on the information given. So say I'm finding the derivative of the inverse of a function at a, b. So that means my inverse function has the coordinates a, b. The derivative of this thing, of the inverse, is equal to the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function at the point B, A. So I know if I have coordinates on an inverse function, A, B, the same coordinates on the original function are B, A. Those coordinates just get flip-flopped. So if I find the value of the derivative of the original at this point, B, A, the derivative of the inverse is the reciprocal of this derivative. So one over F prime of B. Again, this looks a little weird, but if we do one out and make our own table, I feel like it will make a lot more sense. So here we go. We're gonna try our original example again, find the derivative of the inverse of y equals x cubed at x equals eight. So I'm gonna start by setting up a table that's similar to the one that's up here. I'm gonna have y, my original function, y inverse, and then my column headers are gonna be x, y and derivative. I'm looking for the value of the inverse of y equals x cubed at x equals eight. If the x coordinate of the inverse is eight, that means the y coordinate of the original is eight. Again, I need to try and find the value of some derivative of the original because my derivative of the inverse is gonna be one over whatever value I get here. But right now, I don't know what this x value is, so I need to find that. I know that if y, is equal to x cubed. And I know the value of the inverse has an x coordinate of eight and a y coordinate of y on the original. I can replace that y with an eight, solve for x, I get two. So that means this question mark here is really just a two. So at this point, I'm looking for f prime of two. So I need to find y prime. The derivative of x cubed is three x squared. So if I'm finding f prime of two, that's three times two squared. 2 squared is 4 times 3, I get 12. So the value of the derivative of the inverse function is 1 over this value, the reciprocal of the original, 1 over 12. There we go. Same answer we got in the previous example. So again, this theorem can be a little bit wordy, but setting up this table kind of helps us find all the information that we're looking for and leads us to the answer that we need. Let's do a couple of examples so we can get used to kind of what's going on here. Number one. Let f be the function f of x equals x cubed plus 7x plus 12. If g of x equals f inverse x and f of 1 equals 10, find g prime of 10. So if I'm finding g prime and g is the inverse of f, I know f and g are inverse functions. So I'm finding the derivative of the inverse of f at x equals 10. So I'm going to set up a similar table to what I had on the previous pages. So f 
and then G of X is F inverse. So I'll leave that all in one spot. My column headers up top are X coordinate, Y coordinate, and derivative. I'm looking for G prime of 10. So my X value goes here. I know that if my inverse has an X value of 10, the original has a Y value of 10 at that same point. So I need to find this X value. Now, if I did this algebraically like I did in that last example, I would have X cubed plus 7X plus 12 equals 10. And that would be pretty hard to solve without a calculator. So they were kind here. They told us that F of 1 is equal to 10. So I can fill in X equals 1 here. At this point, I need to find F prime of 1. I know that the value of the derivative of the inverse at X equals 10 will be 1 over whatever I get for F prime. So I'm going to find F prime of X quick. Just using a simple power rule, I get 3x squared plus 7. So now if I find f prime of 1, I have 3 times 1 squared plus 7, which gives me 10. Which means g prime of 10 is going to be 1 over 10. Let's look at another example. Number 2. Let f be the function f of x equals 7x plus 1 cubed plus sine x. If g of x equals f inverse x and f of 0 is 7, find g prime of 7. So again, I'm going to start by setting up a table that has f and f inverse. Since g and f are inverse functions, I'm looking for g prime of 7 or the inverse of f at x equals 7. So my table is all set up. I know I'm looking for g prime of 7, so I can put a 7 in for x. And again, they were kind here. They told me that when x is 0, y is 7 in my original. So I know this matches up with the information that I'm looking for. If they had not told me this, I would have had to do 7 times x plus 1 cubed plus sine x equals 7 and then solve for x. That would have been a little bit of a pain. So them giving us our original point here is very helpful. At this point, I need to find f prime of 0. And then the value of the derivative of the inverse at x equals 7 will be 1 over whatever I get for this derivative here. So when I start to find a derivative of f of x, I'm going to do a chain rule first where x plus 1 is the inside and then 7 something cubed is the outside. 3 times 7 gives me 21. Leave the inside alone. Drop that exponent by 1. So here's derivative of the outside. Leave the inside alone times derivative of the inside would just be 1. The derivative of x is 1. Derivative of 1 is 0. And then I have to continue on. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Now I'm looking for f prime of 0. So I'm going to replace all my x's with zeros. 0 plus 1 is just 1 squared. That's going to end up being 1 and cosine of 0. So I have 21 plus cosine of 0 is 1. So I get 22. f prime of 0 is 22, which means g of 7 or f inverse of 7's derivative is 1 over 22. Let's look at another example. Number 3. Let f be a differentiable function such that f of 3 is 2, f of 2 is 7, f prime of 3 is negative 4, and f prime of 2 is 5. The function g is differentiable and g of x equals f inverse x for all values of x. What is the value of g prime of 2? So I'm looking for the derivative of the inverse of f of x at x equals 2. So again, we'll start by setting up our table. I'm looking for g prime of 2. So I'm going to put an x value in the 2 spot in my g row. This means my original function has a y value of 2. So now I'm going to scan the information that they gave me, and I'm looking for a y value of 2 in the function f. So a y value of 2 occurs here in my function f and that x value is 3. At this point, I'm looking specifically for f prime of 3 to finish out this row. f prime of 3 is negative 4. So that means that g prime of 2, the value of the derivative of the inverse of f at x equals 2 is 1 over this derivative. So 1 over negative 4. Let's look at another one. Number four, functions f and g are differentiable and f of g of x equals x for all values of x. f of two is six and f prime of two is five. What are the values of g of six and g prime of six? So in this instance, they're not specifically or explicitly telling us that f and g are inverse functions. They're telling us in a very backwards way. So this little statement up here, f of g of x equals x, 
is fancy for f and g are inverse functions. So since f and g are inverse functions and I'm looking for g of 6 and g prime of 6, I'm going to start again by setting up my table. I have my function f of x and I know the inverse of f is equal to g. Since I'm looking for g of 6, I'm going to put an x value in the 6 spot for my g row. And again, since these are inverse function, the six in the X can go in the six in the Y in my original. So when I scan my information up here, I'm looking for an X value and when Y is equal to six specifically. So that's gonna be here. So I have a Y value of six and the X value that's getting me that Y value is two. So F of two equals six, which tells me that G of six must be two, right? I just have to flop those coordinates. So there's one part of this question answered. The other piece I'm looking for is g prime of 6, so this derivative, which is going to be 1 over the derivative of f. So I need f prime of 2, which they gave me here. f prime of 2 is 5. So that tells me that g prime of 6 is 1 over 5. Let's look at one last example. Same thing as before. I'm going to start by setting up a table. So I have f of x and f inverse is equal to g. I'm looking specifically for g prime of 5. So I'm going to put a 5 in the x spot, which means in my original, the y is 5. They tell us here some helpful information that f of 0 is 5. So f of 0 is 5, x is 0, y is 5. I need to now find f prime of 0, and then g prime of 5 will be 1 over whatever I get for f prime of 0. When I start to find f prime of x here, for e to the negative 2x, I have to use an e to the u rule. The derivative of e to the u is e to the u du dx. So e to the negative 2x times negative 2. The derivative of negative 9x cubed is going to be negative 27x squared. And the derivative of 4 is just 0. So now I'm looking for f prime of 0. I'm going to move this negative 2 to the front because it just looks a little bit nicer. So negative 2 e to the negative 2 times 0 minus 27 times 0 squared. I know e to the 0 is 1 times negative 2 would give me a negative 2. And then this is just going to be minus 0. So I'm good to go on f prime of 0. f prime of 0 is negative 2, which means g prime of 5 is 1 over negative 2. That's it for finding derivatives of inverse functions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.